Hey guys, welcome to the final lesson of the course. Now it's time to create some materials so that the monster will finally come to life. Because right now we have all the, mo the body model and we have the lighting pretty well set up. So we need the final step so that everything makes sense. So let's begin by creating some materials. If we take a look at the document that I showed you on the first lesson, you can see our color palette and remember that I told you that we are going to be using some pastel tones, some tones very light, for example this very pale pink, the pale blue and a pale yellow. So these are the three colors that we are going to be using. I don't want to use too many colors, I just want three colors so that it looks very very nice. So all we have to do is to create a new material and let's begin by creating let's begin by creating the yellow material now I, sh I have here the RGB content so all we have to do is to double click on the material go to color and change the tones as they are on the color palette for example, 255229, 255229, and for the blue it's 113. And now we have the same yellow as on our document. Okay. On the color also, let's change the model from Lambertian to Orinayer, because you can see how the light goes softer here on the ordinator because on the Lambertian you can see that the shadow is really sharp and on this one the shadow is a little more spread and is a little more smooth. Now let's go to the reflectance tab here and I'm going to click on add to add a new layer and this layer will be Beckman now this Beckman you can see that the the material right now is completely reflective I don't want, the, want it to be completely reflective so we need to change some stuff here for example the global reflection brightness should be on 70 percent okay now here on layer 1 you can see that the type is on Beckman now the attenuation is on average and we have here the roughness, reflection strength, the specular strength and the bomb strength. If we increase the, the specular you can see that we don't, doesn't, don't have too much change because the reflection is very strong so we can leave it on 20% but we're actually going to increase the roughness. Right now it's, uh, you can see that the reflection is really smooth but if I increase the roughness, say to 100, you can see that the shape is completely rough, the reflection is completely rough. So I'm going to set it to 35. And now you can see that we have the reflection, but the reflection isn't completely smooth. We have some nice texture here on our material. Now, the layer color is fine as it is right now go to layer mask and here on texture let's click on load image and click on the image that I shared with you on the files on the course files which is this high contrast texture because I want it to be I want the, te the material to have a little texture like some sort of, of plastic vinyl or something. So I'm going to use this image, click on open, say yes, OK. And now go to layer Fresnel, Fresnel and instead of none, let's set it to dielectric and let's leave everything as it is right now. Now let's go to the layers on the reflectance and let's delete this default specular. And let's add a reflection legacy right here. 
and on the reflection attributes let's set the roughness to 15 you can see how it's getting rougher and the specular to 0 and finally on layer color let's set the brightness to 15 also let's change the texture to filter and let's go to the layers and make sure that these are placed on top now we may want to add a little bit more saturation to our color because on with the lights and everything it will look a little too pale so we can increase a little bit the saturation okay so let's leave it like this and we can set this material to one of these balls maybe this one and let's see how it looks with our camera let's wait a moment all right it's looking fine now let's go with, uh, to create the next materials we can just duplicate this material and change the tone because all the texture and the reflectance will be the same let's change the tone to the pink one 255 158 158 and 192 all right now let's bring this to one of the balls and create a new duplicate for the blue the blue is 117213 and 195 now the blue we can color this ball here and we can use this to color the background also because I want the background to be shiny and we I want it to be with the same tones remember that we're using trying to use almost only three tones so we have this and it's looking very good and now we need to create a new duplicate of this pink material because for the body of the monster I want this same material but with a little gradient so double click on the material and on color on texture click on gradient and let's change this gradient this color will be the same pink one and for the secondary color I'm going to create a duplicate of the pink one but I'm going to lower the color a lot to make it look very very pale just like this now for the type of gradient I'm going to use 3D linear okay let's see how it works I'm going to set this material to the monster and you can see that it looks really weird so I'm going to double click on the color go to the gradient again and uncheck the cycle and now the color will take all of the monster's body now take the material to the arms and to the fit and we are good with the monsters tones now we're missing a few materials here for example I'm going to create a new material duplicate it and change this tone to white don't make it completely white make it just a very 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 pale color and I will drop this 
on the teeth you can see here on the object panel I'm going to throw this material here and for the eyes and eyebrows I'm going to use like a very pale brown something like this or maybe not so pale something over here and I'm going to use that for the eyes and for the eyebrows now we're only missing the spikes now for the spikes I want a funny color and for the funny color I'm going to use this yellow material so let's copy and paste this material let's double click on it and for the texture I'm going to surface and I'm going to select tiles now on tiles you will have this which doesn't look good at all but if we select these tiles and go to pattern instead of a squares select lines and now it's, we're going somewhere now what we have to do is to change the red tone to our yellow which is this and one one three maybe make it just a little bit more saturated okay this could be white this could be white and this could be white now for the bevel width let's decrease the bevel width and we will have this lines material now click OK and let's look for the spikes they are here and I'm going to place this material here and you can see how cool it looks and now let's take a look at how it's looking okay it's looking really cool but we have to create one final thing and is that we are going to add some ambient occlusion because the ambient occlusion what it does is that it makes the shadows so much sharper and it increases the shadow area and makes everything look so much real so I'm going to render edit render settings and I'm going to check the ambient occlusion now for the ambient occlusion right now the gradient is from black to white I'm going to change the black to a dark gray so that the shadows are not so dark now we can close this and let's see how it looks now with the ambient occlusion let's wait for it and now you can see the difference you can see how the shadows are so much darker and sharper and more realistic so that's it we created a 3d monster using all the shapes we didn't use any plugin we didn't use anything downloaded from the internet we used everything that is native on on cinema 4d and you can see how cool are the things that we can create using the 3d modeling options that cinema brings and the, how important it is to keep the lights on, on a good a good setup of lights and good materials of course you can play around with the lights we c you can make it a little darker on some sides on uh, maybe some colors on the lights or anything but for now I wanted to create it like this because uh, just like I showed you on the reference I wanted to create like a, a cool cute monster poster f on Cinema 4D so y as you can see modeling on Cinema 4D is not easy it's it's really hard in fact but when you know the tools it's really simple because you will be faster and faster and faster and you will be better and better and better at modeling on 3d on cinema 4d so I hope that you enjoyed the course please may remember to submit your own projects your own creations you don't have to create this same monster you can create 
any monster that you want uh, with any shape with any details that you want just let your ima imagination fly and create something wonderful and remember that if there's something that you didn't quite understand or there's something that you have a doubt with please leave a comment on the discussion board and I'm going to and I'm going to answer the question whenever I can I'm almost all the time online so I'm going to answer as fast as I can so again I hope that you enjoyed the course and see you on another course